Hi and welcome back. In this video, I will show you how you can implement and use the viral Nadaraya Watson indicator. Using Python, this can be done in just a few lines of code. And I think actually the indicator itself can cost you just two lines of code. We will dive deep into the indicator's characteristics and we will compare it to the Bollinger Bands indicator, since it does look a bit like the Bollinger Bands. If this is your first time on this channel, I usually share links to download the Python code from the description below, so you can download the code for free and use it for your experiments and projects. The main purpose is to use this indicator in our algorithmic trading systems. If we start with a quick look at the indicator, it shows that it can be used to detect extreme price points, which are also excellent entry points that can play a huge role in any trading strategy. Notice when the price goes out of the indicator's envelope, it shows good potential trades because we expect the price to converge back towards the center of the envelope or its current fair value. It kind of reminds me of the Bollinger Bands. So we will go through the details of the indicator, showing you how it works and what are the pitfalls to consider when trading the Nadaraya Watson strategies. The indicator is based on a kernel regression using a non-parametric approach to estimate a value y given an input x. So the objective is to find a non-linear relation between a pair of random variables x and y. In our case, x is the time and y is the price of the asset we are trading. If this is not clear for you and it's been a while since you have been uh, using statistics, don't worry, there's a very easy and simple way to understand this indicator that will spare you the mathematical formalism with all the equations to reach the final indicator formula. Actually, the final form of the indicator can be seen as a weighted local average using this equation to compute the weights. Let's see this on a graph. Consider this is our price chart, and we are currently at this candle. So we need to compute the middle value of the indicator represented by the middle curve. To do this, we will simply take a window of previous candles and compute the average of the closing prices using special weights for each of these closing prices. Naturally, we'd want to give more weights to the most recent candles. So we will use a special weighing function, or we can also call it importance function, to give more importance to the most recent candles or the most recent closing prices. This is a typical set of weights that we can use. It's derived from a normal distribution, and we can pretty much use any kernel function in this case. The example we are seeing here is a typical Nadaraya Watson set of weights. So we can see that more importance is given to the recent candles and the weight decreases as we go further in the past candles. This is basically it in a simplified and summarized way. It's just a local average using some special weights derived from a kernel function. Okay, now let's see how to integrate this in Python for algorithmic trading systems. This is our Jupyter Notebook file. First few lines or the first cell is just to load the data. So I'm reading a CSV file using the uh, 15 minutes time frame between 2023 and 2024. The second cell is where the magic happens. This is where we're going to compute the indicator. We're just taking a slice of the data frame so the computation doesn't take too much time. So the X part is my index. So it's the index of the data frame. Let me show you how it is. So we're going to print it here. I'm going to load the data and I'll just print the data frame. We have an integer index. So this is our X for the moment. I'm not using the GMT time as an index. It's just a column. It's there in the data. For now, we're using integer indexing. And this is our X part. Now the Y part is the closing price. And before that, I need to import from stats models, non-parametric kernel regression. I'm going to import kernel regression. So the model is equal to kernel regression function. The input parameter, the first variable, is the closing price, and the independent variable is the sample.index. So we can remove this part, so the x. The variable type is continuous. We're using continuous variables, so it's a floating, these are floating values, the closing price. The regression type is local constant. Then we have the bandwidth, it's equal to 3. I'm going to put 10 here. This is basically related to the window you want to consider when you put the weights. So if you put a higher number, you're going to have a smoother envelope or a smoother uh, kind of curves right here. So we're going to visualize all of this and we're going to compare it actually with the uh, Bollinger Bands. Then we can use the model that we've just defined here. Uh, we're going to fit it. And whatever we have as a result, we're going to put these into fitted values and marginal effects. 
Then we're going to put the fitted values into uh, the data frame as a new column. So these are the Nadaraya Watson fitted. Then we compute the uh, residuals, which is basically the difference between the closing prices, the original price, and the fitted values. So whatever we got from the Nadaraya Watson curve. And that's going to give us the middle curve, what we see here. So that's the middle curve in green. So if you want to add an envelope, so an upper band and a lower band to just color this, we can just add the standard deviation. So we're going to add the curve um, twice the standard deviation of this difference between the closing price and the fitted value. So the uh, residuals. Now, at this point, there are two different ways of doing this. This way, the second way is just like the Bollinger Bands, but this way that we've just introduced is specifically uh, used for the envelope of the Nadaraya Watson. It provides something more smooth and a bit more uh, parallel, I would say, to the middle curve. So notice how there is this uh, simil similar behavior, similar pattern between the middle curve and the upper and the lower bands. In this code, we can have both ways. Either we can use this way, the smooth way, or we can just um, use a different way to do it. For now, let's start with the basic way, the way that comes with the Nadaraya Watson. We're going to see how it works, and then we can change it and see what how it influences the uh, upper and lower curves. And at this point, I can just add uh, two new columns, the upper envelope, the lower envelope, and we're going to take the middle curve, we add the standard deviation, and then for the lower curve, we, we subtract the uh, standard deviation. So remember that we're just running on 100 candles, we have 100 rows, and uh, I'm going also to add the Bollinger Bands for comparison later on, so I'm using the uh, Pandas Technical Analysis Package, as usual, to compute the Bollinger Bands. I tried to increase the length to make it as smooth as possible using the same standard deviation factor, just to get as close as possible to the Nadaraya Watson envelope. So now I can verify my columns. And what we have here, we have the fitted, the middle curve, the upper envelope, the lower envelope, Bollinger Bands, um, lower, middle, and upper curves as well. So we don't care about the rest. For now, we have what we need. I'm plotting the candles. I'm adding the uh, middle curve, so the NW fitted. This is the Nadaraya Watson fit, the middle curve. And then the upper envelope, the lower envelope as well. So I guess this one. And I'm coloring in blue uh, with some transparency what comes in between these curves. So we can already run this and we can see how it looks like. So this is my curve between 0 and 100. Remember, we took a small slice of the data frame. And a quick look, we can see that when the price goes out of the envelope, it probably signals that the price is going to converge back to the middle of the envelope. So this is what we hope for. And to be honest, this these curves, they look very smooth. Now I'm going to add the Bollinger Bands because the first time I heard about this indicator, I said to myself, this looks very much like the Bollinger Bands. So these are in blue as well. Maybe we can change the colors. These are our colored Bollinger Bands. And it's a completely different indicator. It doesn't look the same at all. Now let's do an experiment. Let's go back and instead of residuals, I'm going to use a standard deviation that's a bit different. So the one that we usually use for the Bollinger Band. So that's the standard deviation over a rolling window of 30 closing prices from the candles. This is how it's done with the uh, Bollinger Bands. So I'm going to run this, we run the visualization again, and we can see now that the smoothness of the band kind of disappeared a bit because it's picking up something more similar to the uh, Bollinger Bands. And the width of the band is somehow an indicator of the volatility of the market. To make it clearer, I'm going to shut down Bollinger Band visualization. So I'm going to command this part and this is how it looks like. So as you can see, the band is not as smooth as before because we're using a, somehow something inspired by the Bollinger Bands actually to compute the standard deviation for the upper and the lower bands. Still, we have uh, some level of smoothness, which is coming from the middle curve, and it's influencing both the upper and the lower curves. But of course, we don't have to do this. It's just uh, us experimenting now, just to understand how it works and what's the difference between this and the Bollinger Bands. So I'm going to revert back to the original version, I'm going to run it, and I will show you uh, how smooth it is. So. There's one issue that we should be aware of when we want to include this in our trading systems. This indicator repaints. Okay, what does it mean? Let's take a look now at the data frame. So what are the values 
of the data frame. I'm going to print the DF sample at this point. Let's take the last candle, okay? And these are the values of the uh, fitted price, the upper envelope and the lower envelope. I'm going to note these. I'm going to copy these and paste them right here as a comment, just to keep them in memory for now. So 1.100198, 1 etc., etc. Now let's change the slice we are computing the indicator for to, let's say, five additional candles. So it's from the beginning of the data frame until 105. And I'm going to print these. So uh, these are the values. Now I want to check the um, row 99. And let's check the numbers. So this is the same candle, the same row. So we allowed for a few more candles in the future. And notice how it influences these values. So the, um, I'm going to take these. I'm going to copy these. This is for the same row for the same candle. Okay. And we can notice how the, um, the values became different. So we have, it's not a big difference, but we have a difference and we should be aware of this. The reason why this is changing is because the more data you add, the regression is going to have more point to fit on. And when you're fitting on, you need this smoothness by the nature of the indicator or the nature of the function, the regression function that's trying to fit to these points. If you add more points, to keep this smoothness, the curve has to adjust not only the, for the new points, but also for the older points. And this is why it's going to change the previous fit that we had in the previous before we added these, um, these new candles. So whatever we're seeing now, in the future, when more candles are being added, is going to change. So this is how it repaints. It repaints according to the new points. Now, is it important? Will it influence our strategies and our trading? There's only one way to find out. We have to build a full trading strategy using this indicator and check how it behaves and maybe compare it to other similar indicators. But we're not going to do this in this video. If you have any strategies using the uh, Nadaraya Watson indicator, uh, just share them in the comments section. Let me know if you want me to further test this indicator and if you are interested in knowing more about it. As a last part for this video, just before ending, I want to show you the weights that we usually use or this kernel, actually how it's distributing the weights for the previous candles. And this cell shows you exactly how it works. So we have a function called Gaussian kernel. So this is the kernel that's used by the Nadaraya Watson indicator. Then we have, uh, we can compute the weights according to the theory we've presented very briefly. Obviously it's much simpler to do it in Python and to show you the code rather than explaining these uh, equations. But this is basically what we are coding here. So we're coding the equations, we're showing the weights at the end that are used to average, to compute the local average actually using the closing prices and so on. So the most recent candle has the highest weight and the weight decreases when we go into the past candles. And we can change some parameters. So the bandwidth, for example, instead of this, we can put five. We can see how it influences the weights and the decreasing slope of the weights distribution. And this is basically it for this quick video. I hope you guys liked it and found the information a bit helpful for your trading and algorithmic trading, maybe for your coding projects. If so, please leave a comment, drop a like, let me know what you think about it. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.